Okay, what we're looking at here is the ferrous metal indicator circuit. It uses an op amp, uh, a couple of resistors, and a couple of LEDs, and a variable potentiometer, and a Hall effect transistor. So I'll just explain what the Hall effect transistor does shortly. Part of the circuit will be a magnet, and that magnet will be used as a reference so that we can detect ferrous objects. So, for example, if you wanted to check the iron content of, say, your coins, so for example, silver coins shouldn't have any iron in them at all. So if you wanted to check that the silver coin was a good coin and not uh, some forgery with iron put in the middle of it, you can just place that in front. Uh, but, uh, this is just a good example of this little test circuit. The, what's good about this test circuit is it's, it's a nice starting circuit for when you're getting when you're starting to learn about electronics. So uh, I'll just quickly go through how it works. First of all, we need to know how a Hall effect transistor works. Well, the Hall effect is, is an interesting effect. If you hold a magnet here and you have a magnetic field going across some semiconductor, piece of semiconductor here, I've drawn it as a square, so you've got magnetic field coming at right angles through it, and then what you do is you place a current through the semiconductor like as shown here. So you've got a current going through this semiconductor and a magnetic field at right angles going through the, the piece of semiconductor. Now the interesting effect that uh, a chap called Edwin Hall discovered was that uh, if you have a right angle, if you have a magnetic field coming in at a right angle where a current is passing through the semiconductor, what actually happens is the act there's a force, there's a force inside the material that pushes that pushes some of the uh, electrons over to one side, so you get you get a although all the electrons are still in, in other words electrons are still going this way or positive charges are still going in this direction you get you get a shift so they're moving along in this direction, but they tend to to uh, uh, shift across each other when there's a magnetic field showing so you end up with more pluses on this side for example than electrons on this side, so you get a a difference in voltage here between the sides of the plate. Now it's very very small so it's a tiny tiny amount of voltage difference but it's enough to be measured and that's what's the Hall effect so you can take advantage of the Hall effect by measuring this slight voltage difference here so you can amplify that that voltage difference and light up a bulb for example. So that's exactly what we're doing here so what we've got here is we've got a fixed magnet here on this side and on the other side, whenever you place a, a metal object near a magnetic field, you change the influence of the magnetic field. Now, of course, if you, if you modify this magnetic field, if you bend it in some way, then this voltage difference is going to change. So what this circuit does is it amplifies the voltage difference, but it amplifies it on a threshold. So it's like one of these lights will either come on or come off. So I'll just explain how the circuit works here. So, for example, you've got this voltage difference coming across here. Now, one side of it is going into this inverting input of the op-amp here, and the other side is going into the non-inverting input. What we can do here is we can set a reference voltage, so try and get these as equal as we can. What we do is we get these as equal as we can so that the red LED bulb is just lit up. And what that means is it's slightly negative here, so we're going to have a negative this is this is going to amplify the difference. So if this inverting input is higher than the non-inverting input, which we, we set this up to be, then this red LED will, will be on. And uh, we set this threshold so it's the slightest change to it will actually turn make that go high and then the green one will go on. So once we've got that nicely set so that it's like a, a threshold value where a change either way will set one of these LEDs off, then we know that if we use a ferrous object near a magnetic field, it's going to change the magnetic field and then it's going to change this, this uh, potential difference. Uh, so as we bring it closer, what will actually happen is this voltage uh, value here will increase and it'll, because we've set this at a very threshold, the slightest change increasing this voltage will cause this then to flip from zero to high and if this is a high voltage now 
then this green LED will go on. So that's basically all it does. It's just measuring the difference between these two voltages and either the, the red LED will go on or the green LED will go on. So when the LED, the red LED, this is when it's at its default value. So when nothing's happening, the red LED will be lit. As soon as we bring in a metal object, as soon as it gets close, the red will go out and the green LED will go on. So that's really all it works. So I'll just show you that working and uh, we'll adjust uh, we'll adjust to find this like threshold value and then we'll bring in some metal objects and uh, show how that uh, will flick the red to the green and the green to the red. So let's just do that. I've just mocked this up on a breadboard. It's not in the tin or anything at the moment. It's just in this breadboard so we can quickly see how it works. So we're going to stick on a, actually this is a, it's about a 6 volt battery really. Uh, so uh, there we go, we've got the red already showing so I'm just going to show you how that can be, how that is very very on the threshold there. So if we move this and just show you how that's on a, on a very fine threshold, so we move this back. There you go, the green's on now. So what we want to do is we want to find a point where it's just that green one, just before that green light goes on, just before the red light goes off. So we just want to find, so if I just move, no, it's about there. So now that's on the threshold. So if we can see here, I've placed a, a magnet in front of the, uh, the Hall effect transistor. And this now has got a magnetic field around it. If we try and alter that field by bringing in a metal object close to it, it's going to light that green. I'll just show you with a screwdriver to begin with, just to show you that that's working. So we're going to bring in a ferrous object. This has got iron in it. So if we bring that in, you can see that the green's gone on. So that's the circuit working. So just to give you an example, you might want to check some coins and maybe um, one of these one of these connectors. That that's uh, There you go. So that's you can see that's a ferrous object. If we just check, say we've got like some English coins here, we've got a 1p, a 5 pence piece, a 20 pence and a pound coin. So let's just check the 20 uh, piece coin. No, that doesn't make any effect whatsoever. The 2 pound coin, no. So there's no metal in either of those. Uh, no uh, iron. And yes, this has. So the 5 pence coin interestingly has got some iron in it and these coins too these pennies they've also got iron in them so they're actually making the light go now for example silver coins uh, if this imagine this was a silver coin that has no iron in it and you don't want it to have any iron in it it's, a lot of people will fake coins by putting iron in them to try and get the weight and you can do a quick check check with that by just placing it in front of the hall effect. Now if there's no iron in it then the green the red light will stay on you, it won't get a green light. Now I can just show you that uh, normally if you was to place if you was just to get an ordinary magnet, you might say, well why not just use a magnet? Well you can most of the time, but I'll just take one of these magnets in isolation and it's the same as these magnets here. And there isn't enough strength on the magnet to move that so if you were testing that as like that you wouldn't notice I've got this wire behind it now if you was testing it you wouldn't be able to notice you're you're not sensitive enough to feel that magnetic field so what you can do then is you can use this it just goes to show that it will detect um, it will detect a, a, a ferrous object embedded in a in a in quite a fat coin for example so if you bring that up close there there you go now you can see there that it's detected so even a small tiny piece of metal inside a coin it'll detect it so that's where you know using a magnet on its own it's not going to help you i mean it'll help you sometimes but it won't find those little bits of iron you wouldn't ever use a circuit like that to to check coins but it just goes to show you could you know there's you could build that in a little box uh, have the uh, in fact, when I put this in a tin box, that will be on the surface of... In fact, that we won't use a tin box. It's important not to use a tin box. What we will be using is an aluminium box. Now, aluminium 
uh, tin obviously is not magnetic so that's not going to affect this circuit. If we was to use a tin box then obviously we're going to affect the circuit because uh, the magnetic field will be affected by the tin box. So you can only construct this circuit inside either a plastic enclosure or a aluminium tin. So we're going to use an aluminium box for this. And that's it. All you need is a you can just use a small neodymium magnet and uh, that's all you need. Just a few parts. Uh, 100 kilo ohms variable potentiometer, two resistors at 470 ohms and two LEDs, one red and one green. So that is the ferrous metal indicator circuit.